Hi, this is Peter. Welcome to another episode of Beyond a Cane Pole. Today, we are coming from inside my house because it's cold outside. And, um, I really didn't feel like braving the cold, especially with me still having sinus problems I've had for a few weeks now. Um, it's not as cold as it was two weeks ago. Pond isn't frozen over, so it is above freezing, but it's pretty darn cold out there. Alright, I have may have mentioned this a couple times. Um, back in 2016, I bought from Gander Mountain, which is now closed, two travel rod sets. Um, they're identical sets. Um, one was for me, one was for the wife. I paired it up with a tackle box I had after I changed out some tackle. Um, I don't know if this is mine or my wife's. It is mine, which is a good thing because I want to show them to you. Now these were originally bought to go in the Jeep, which would have, you know, allowed us to have fishing tackle everywhere you go. The only thing that wasn't purchased with it, uh, dang it, this is a little messed up because my ow, grandnephew borrowed these kits, one of these kits, um, just this past weekend, which is why it was in the house and not in the truck. So he could fish while they were visiting for my um, brother-in-law's um, 50th wedding anniversary party. Uh, in these, I keep a recognizable pole, just one of the extended poles. White has one too. They're not exactly the same. And the rod itself, which I can tell this is the one that got used because it's not velcroed in here properly, is um, a four-piece spinning rod. It came with the reel, all packed up in this nice little case. Now, I've spooled the line up with brand new six-pound test line. So, um, I knew that the line was good. Real handle collapses down. Um, and, and, and proper for this. I probably should have um, done this a little bit more in advance. But these rod sections go together. Fairly easy like. forming one to say an almost seven foot rod but yeah I know you can't see the whole rod this is a six foot rod excuse me um, ultra light action rod one to six pound line one thirty seconds to one quarter lower weight it is a little stiffer it's still a little loose A little stiffer than I would like but for a travel rod you don't want it so limber it breaks up no my ceiling fan is not on what the heck here we go so I don't have to really worry about the rod tip I wouldn't keep my ceiling fan off and on if I was putting it on. But yeah, just that simple to set it up and have it ready. You would take your um, line, run it through, and rig it up just like any other rod. But that's the rod. It's a Gander Mountain branded rod, Gander Mountain branded reel. Um, which is to say that I don't know who makes it. For Gander Mountain, or for Gander Mountain when they were still open, but it's a Gander Mountain series. Now, getting to the tackle box, keeping in mind this is a four pound test, test line rod, I guess we'll get into the accessories over here. 
nail clippers, hemostats. Um, yeah, I'm glad I found that. Um, yeah, nail clipper, hemostats. That was the bread I took because it was some sort of, or sent because it was some sort of neighborhood pond. There's a fishing towel. I actually have two in here because, you know, this is set up for the wife and I. Have some <coughs> six pound line to go on the um, poles, which both of us have a pole. I have, of course, a bait knife. And this is one of my folding fillet knives. Yes, I might, you know, go somewhere where I want to keep fish. We have been known to pass by the club and, you know, stop to check on the boat and stuff just because we were on another trip that drove by. And if we didn't, you know, didn't have fishing gear. We wouldn't be fishing, so part of partially this is for stuff like that, and I definitely do keep fish out of, out at our fishing club. All right, that's the accessories. There was a stringer in there. <laughs> yeah, I may have used it. Otherwise, or it may have gone missing. Now, currently, I don't have this box filled up, so there is room for more. I have some power bait. Um, worms. This is their little trout worm and rainbow spark sparkle and pumpkin seed which is you know brown. These are just some I picked up somewhere. I have some inline spinners. Uh, this is more of a red, fire tiger, black and one white. Um, there's only one white of the fire the fire tiger or you know chartreuse and one white because of lost the other ones. I need to get some more of those. And like I say, there's room to expand as I go. I didn't want to overfill this and at one time I even had this in a smaller tackle package. Then I have a box of some soft plastics. I have some black chartreuse and curly tail grubs. I have some little crawdad things I picked up somewhere. I have some little what look like a little wax worm or grub bodies I picked up off eBay. Those are glow in the dark. Then I have a chartreuse, uh, off white, a red, and a white. It was a dollar ninety six for the whole thing for those. I wanted the white and I wanted the chartreuse, but the other ones were there. I have some various size jig heads. I have some black beetle spins, some white beetle spins. Then I have Zoom Finesse Worms. You all know I like Zoom Worms. These are the Finesse Worms, so they're the 5 inch. I have black. I have a green. And then I have what I refer to as a green pumpkin or pumpkin. It's not the orange pumpkin, it's the green pumpkin. That is one of my favorite worms. Um, if you look at it, there's only one pack of black. The green I actually had and I picked up two packs of these green pumpkins. Now that'll allow me to catch bass, maybe not large bass, but bass just about anywhere I go. Um, thinking about it, I'll probably get some of those mini miniature, you know, mini spinner baits struck from Strike King and put into this box the rest of the way. Why is that not going in there? Okay, then we get to one more box that I have. Now, I put a piece of craft foam in the top of this box. Um, the reason behind that is there is always a little space at the top of these, and I wanted to cut that space out because these are hooks. I have some small split shot, some slightly larger split shot, a couple straws with some power bait type stuff in it. Um, this is an experiment, see how long it lasts, see if they work any good. Um, these are the power bait little um, grubs, I believe, or I forget what they're, what they're called, maggots. Um, and then this is just like yellow little power baits. I have some nails. I have some um, weedless hooks for warning a wacky rig with the, um, with the worms. I even have some small weedless hooks. Um, I was thinking about seeing if I could find some smaller than 5 inch worms like those trout worms are. I could wacky rig the trout worms. I have some number 6 hooks. Heavy duty. Wait a minute, those might be number 4. 
um, heavy duty. But when to do a little catfishing, that's what the bigger weights are for. Um, these are my number six hooks. Then I have some number 12 hooks for panfish. I have an assortment of bobbers or floats. That's it. It's not much in here. Um, let's say we were in a hotel. I could maybe pick up a piece of bread or a bagel for bait. Um, bread is found anywhere, even convenience stores. Uh, if I could pick up worms, I could dig worms. You've seen me do that. Um, you know, I could pick up baits, natural baits, about anywhere. The one thing you're not seeing that is in addition to this kit or with this kit is out in the truck, I have a cricket cage. Um, it's one of those tube cricket cages. It's one of the larger ones. The smaller ones are about like that. The larger ones are about that long. It's about that big around. Um, if I was somewhere where I could buy crickets or if I was catching grasshoppers or crickets, I could use that. So that's my travel fishing kit, I guess you would call it. It's something I keep just so I'm ready to go fishing anytime, anywhere. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. I will try and get out more videos in the near future.